This is the instructional video on how to do your liver flush. This is part two to the part one of the liver flush video. So I'm going to take you through the steps with all of my personal notes on how to create a most effective liver, gallbladder, and kidney flush. This will be removing the toxic stones from your vital organs. This also cures many diseases and ailments within the body. Step one, you're going to be taking 20 drops of Cinque Pedra extract in a glass of water three times daily for 14 days. Step two, on day eight, start drinking eight ounces of sour tart cherry juice. You're gonna to wanna to divide that for four ounces, one to two hours after breakfast so as to not use the bile for digestion. And the other four ounces after lunch, wait one to two hours. So that way you're gonna be storing the bile which acts as lubrication for your stones to pass without pain. It's most important that you do this and to make sure that the, all the liquids that you consume during those last six days when you start drinking this juice are lukewarm. You don't want to be having anything cold because that's going to that's gonna make the stones hard. You want the, to start loosening them up so that they can pass easily. Uh, also, when you start drinking the juice on day eight, you're going to do it for six days and you're going to want to make sure that during those six days you have a vegetarian diet, uh, no cold liquids like I said, and then continue the Cinque Pedra. You're going to continue that until the day of the flush. Step three, so you're going to want to do a colonic or an enema. The first one you're going to want to do it the day of your flush. And then the second one, you're going to want to do it one to two days after the release. So the flush itself is going to be around 16 to 20 hours. It starts in the night and it finishes the next day around noon. So after noon, you're going to be quite fragile then. Wait one to two days and you want to get your uh, colon cleansed. So I do want to talk about the colon cleansing for a second because it's vitally important. The reason why you want to get this done is because you want to clear out the passageway for the stones to pass unobstructed. Also, when you're passing the stones and let's say some get stuck in the intestinal crevices of your intestines, that's quite normal. You want to make sure to remove them afterwards, the ones that get stuck, because if not, they get reabsorbed into the bloodstream, toxifying your blood and uh, this can result in vomiting, nausea, it's not good. Uh, however, if you've done several colonics and you go, because they're quite expensive now, they're about $140 per colonic. Um, if, you, if you want, you can do an enema. However, if you've never done colonics, they're absolutely phenomenal. Um, you will see parasites, you will see fecal matter that's been stuck to your intestinal wall for years and years and years and years, and you just see it all come out and it, it um, balances your pH and you feel much more vitality as well. Uh, important note, do not get a coffee enema or you know these different types of enemas. Coffee is super acidic and you don't want to bring the pH of your body down further. That's not good. You want to make sure it's just with clean water uh, that they do the colonic. It's a bit uncomfortable. People are very afraid of it, but it's not as bad as it seems. Uh, especially once you start getting used to it, uh, you feel really amazing after. And when you see all of the stuff that's coming out of you, it's like it's very good, totally worth it. Also, fun fact: if you do three colonics, it takes three colonics to completely clean out your intestine. Uh, if you do the three, after that, you will never need a colonoscopy. Isn't that interesting? So moving on to step four. This is day six of the flush. So all of your hard work for the past two strongs and your six days of preparation have led you to day six. And I'm going to read it straight from the book so that you can uh, get it exactly how it's supposed to be. Drink the eight ounces of sour cherry juice in the morning. You may start drinking the juice after awakening. If you feel hungry in the morning, eat a light breakfast, such as fruit or a hot cereal like oatmeal. Avoid regular sugar and other sweeteners, spices, milk, butter, 
oils, yogurt, cheese, ham, eggs, nuts, pastries, cold packaged cereals, and other processed foods. Freshly pressed fruit juices or vegetable juices are fine. Okay, I forgot one time about the eggs and I ate one egg in the morning of the flush. I got so sick, you guys, you have no idea. It was the worst mistake I've ever made. The, it's, this is a natural surgery that you're doing. So any error can, can either render the flush ineffective or it can cause you to get very sick. So you need to be very careful and precise in um, the instructions and following them to a T. So make sure to avoid that. Personally, what I have uh, the day of the flush is I'll have some toast. I won't put anything on it. And then I'll have some oatmeal and I'll make sure to make the oatmeal with water. And maybe I'll just put a little bit of cinnamon and, um, and that's it. And then for lunch, you eat plain cooked or steamed vegetables with rice, preferably white basamati rice, buckwheat, quinoa, or similar grains, and flavor it with a little unrefined sea or rock salt. If you prefer to eat fruit or raw vegetables, that's fine too. So remember to avoid oil and to avoid cooking on day six. Please do not eat any protein foods, nuts, avocado, butter, or oil, or you might feel ill during the actual flush. The main thing is to save as much bile as possible for the liver flush, which is required to move as many stones as possible from the liver and gallbladder. Eating fat or oil containing foods would use up that bile and render the liver flush ineffective. Okay, so you see day six is vital. Also, do not eat or drink anything except water after 1.30 p.m. Otherwise, you may have difficulty passing stones. Follow the exact schedule below. Okay, so here we go with, this, with the schedule. So from 1.30 p.m. until 6 p.m. when the actual flush starts, if I were you, I would cancel your plans. You stay home you are in hibernation mode. You're gonna be in hibernation mode for the next 24 hours and you are fasting from this point on. So you'll start to feel, you know, a little, you know, low energy. Some people get a little dizzy. It's just best to take it easy and stay in the house and, and lie in bed. Um, really save your energy for when you pass these stones. You're gonna start at 5.30 p.m. You're gonna take four glasses of clean purified water that don't have uh, fluoride and you're going to fill each glass with six ounces of this water. Then you're gonna take your magnesium Epsom salt, make sure that it's not uh, fragranced, you want it to be plain. Uh, they have it at Whole Foods if you live in the United States. This is the one that I use. And you're gonna take one tablespoon and you're gonna put it in each glass that you filled. And you're gonna let it the Epsom salt dissolve into the water. You don't want to drink it while it's still rocky. So, you know, squish it, swish it around with a spoon and then put a little aluminum foil over it so nothing gets on the glasses. And these are going to be the four glasses that you're going to drink uh, the day of and then the next morning. So at 6 p.m., you're going to drink your first glass of Epsom salt. Uh, it's a natural laxative, so you s could have some bowel movements and going to the bathroom, make sure it's in close proximity. And you drink it slowly. And if the taste is really bad, what I like to do is I'll just have a little finger's worth of agave to, to get the taste out of my mouth. And I always rinse my mouth after I drink the Epsom salt, and that'll help you a lot. Uh, so you drink the first one at 6 p.m. Then you drink the second one at 8 p.m. And then, and then at 9.45, you're going to prepare the concoction that is going to make these stones come out of your organs. So that's gonna be six ounces of grapefruit juice. Make sure it's organic and freshly squeezed. And you're going to mix it with four ounces of extra virgin olive oil, organic. Make sure to get a high quality ingredients, okay? Don't, 
don't uh, get the cheap stuff. You want the really good stuff. At 10 p.m., you're going to take those two. You're going to take the grapefruit, fresh squeezed grapefruit juice, and you're going to take the olive oil. You're going to stand next to your bed, pour them together. And you're going to shake it for about a minute. And then once you're done shaking it, you have to be standing when you're drinking it. You're going to drink it for the next five minutes. You start the timer, you drink it a little bit. Once you get towards, you have to drink it all. And once you get towards the end of drinking it, you could feel like you need, like you're going to vomit or something. This is kind of the moment of, you know, where you really have to be disciplined and follow through. This is probably the hardest step for me, at least. Uh, if you smoke cannabis or vape cannabis, it actually really helps you to, you know, keep it down and it helps the stomach out. But if you don't, it's fine. You know, just stick it in, you drink it, and then you lie down immediately. When you lie down, you're going to make sure that you have something propping your back so you're not straight back because you could vomit. You just, you want to be propped up a little bit so that it stays low. So you need to be entirely still no movement in fact i recommend you go to sleep because you're going to immediately start feeling the stones coming out of your vital organs this is a great time to do a meditation to aid in the removal of the stones your job is to really hold the fort down in your body while it's doing really a miraculous uh, chore on its own and then you go to sleep Next morning, at 6 a.m., you put your alarm clock. You get up and you drink the third glass of Epsom salt. After you drink this third glass, you should start feeling the movements. And you're probably going to be running to the bathroom. You put your next alarm clock on for 8 a.m. And you drink your fourth and final glass of Epsom salt. And from this point on, during these last two glasses, you are going to be going to the bathroom several times. I highly recommend that you take a photo of each one of your releases. Also, you're going to see this froth. It kind of looks like bubbled froth that comes up. Those are actually kidney stones, little kidney stones. So you're going to see, and um, plastics as well. There's tons of plastics that you can see in there. They're microplastics. Take a photo of each release that you have so that you can start calculating exact around how many stones are coming out, uh, whether you need to alter something in your flush regimen. And, um, and it's just great to see what you have. You know, it's like a progress report. So after your last glass at 8 a.m., I recommend you go to sleep for a little bit. And then you put on your last alarm clock for around 10.30, 11 a.m. At this time, you can start to eat food, but eat very light. You don't want to eat anything heavy, no meat, no, preferably continue being vegetarian all the time. But if you still consume animal, give it at least two to three days before you go back to that. You're going to be in a very kind of, um, very, I don't, kind of fragile, but you're going to feel very tired. Uh, so take it easy. Don't do a lot of things. Don't stress yourself out. Your body just went through a natural surgery. Take good care of yourself. And um, you can slowly start to pick up the pace again later in the day. And the following day, you should feel actually amazing. Now, remember to continue that with your final uh, colonic or enema, which you can do at home. Uh, one to two days after to make sure that you have removed the stones from the internal crevices of your intestines. Once these stones come out, you want to make sure that you do this flush once every four weeks to six weeks until no more stones come out. And then you do one flush a year for maintenance. It took me 18 flushes, so like a year and a half before I got mine all out. Now, I was on prescription medication. I did three rounds of Accutane, and I grew up on Baskin Robbins and McDonald's. Yeah, it was horrible. So I had a lot of processed food and just a lot of things that my liver couldn't uh, filter. So I had an extreme case. Uh, if you have cancer, I've heard of a man that had liver cancer, and it took him somewhere like 35 to 40 flushes. Uh, but it was phenomenal. It reversed his cancer.
and that all of that and so much more is in this book i highly recommend that you guys read it all you'll learn so much about how to put the health back into your hands so that you can actually cure yourself which is something that they still can't do in western medicine when it comes to chronic illness after my fourth flush is when i really started seeing things turn around my skin got better my health got better my vitality so i'm going to list some of these results and you'll be able to have an eye out for them and see if this is something that's beginning to show within you. Some of those results include improved digestion, energy and vitality, freedom from pain, a more flexible body, reversal of the aging process, inner and outer beauty. This has to do with the energetic element of removing the stones as well. Improved emotional health, yep and a clearer mind and improved creativity. So enjoy this journey back to reclaiming your health, your vitality. I'm going to leave a list of the symptoms that relate to liver dysfunction. If you find yourself having several of these symptoms, I strongly recommend you go for this flush and you keep with it and stay disciplined. I'm sending you so much strength, vitality, and determination during this flush and into your future.